What's up? My name is Technobe here for Troubleshooter. Welcome to another video. In this quick video, I'll show you how to optimize Far Cry 6 for the best visibility and best FPS, overall best gameplay. In this video, I'm not going to run through optimizing Windows as there's a thousand other videos that do that and I'm not going to go ahead and repeat myself. This video is only going to focus on in-game settings for Far Cry 6. So to begin, let's go ahead and fire up the game itself. But before we do, a quick note in the Far Cry 6 game here in Ubisoft Connect, do note that if you have the HD texture pack downloaded, you need a monumental amount of VRAM for it to work properly. And of course, having this enabled may cause you to lose some serious FPS, especially on older graphics cards, where your computer is going to be fighting for every bit of VRAM that it can get, as 11 gigs is quite a bit. This is more than 11 gigs required. So do keep that in mind. If you want the absolute best FPS, try the game with and without the HD texture pack if you're going to use that at all. Anyways, let's just jump into the game. So to begin, I'll open up the options here and we'll start on the video tab. This is where you'll find most of the settings. On the monitor tab over here, the refresh rate should of course match the refresh rate of your screen and so should the display resolution down here. Changing the display resolution to be something that isn't native to your screen probably will cause the game to be completely blurry and out of focus. Something you'll need to do here if you haven't set it already is set windowed mode to full screen instead of windowed or bordless. Yes, you can tap out a lot faster, but if you want the absolute best FPS out of the game, make sure that windowed mode is set to full screen. Then on the quality section at the top, we'll run through some settings here to give you the best FPS while maintaining a really good high fidelity in the game. To begin, if you really want to boost your FPS quickly without too much fiddling, use the graphics quality button up here. Usually you can leave the texture filtering at high or anything above that if you have quite a bit of VRAM in your computer. You don't really need to worry about lowering this as it won't really affect your FPS, it only really affects how much VRAM the game uses. Lowering the setting here if you're receiving the VRAM pop-up notification is something you can try to do. The shadows over here are usually something that stay out of vision for most players, so dropping this will cause you to gain quite a few FPS as your computer is not wasting as much time generating all these complicated shadows when you're not really going to focus on them at all. You could quite easily push this all the way down to low instead of ultra and have basically the exact same experience with a ton more FPS. And low in fact looks really good on the screenshot on the right, so that's what I'll leave it as even though I'm playing this game partly for how it looks. The geometry and vegetation setting over here set to high means that you're going to be rendering in a lot of bushes and things like that. The lower this option is here, the more your visibility may be affected when you're trying to look through certain bushes, plants, trees, etc. But having this set to a lower setting allows you to see quite a bit more. As you can see here, the bushes in the screenshot when set to medium, are relatively easy to see through, but as soon as we push it down to low, you may lose quite a bit of visibility through bushes, trees, etc. This will really be up to what you feel, but lowering the setting to low may cause you to lose some visibility in game instead of leaving this as just a medium. Of course, the higher this is, the more vegetation you'll have, grass, etc., which can damage how you look over hills and things like that. So I'd leave this as either medium or low. Moving down one more, we have environment. As you can see on the image on the right hand side, all this really does is affect lighting and of course how reflective the water is. As you can see at anything above low, the water is reflective of what's behind it, which can cause some FPS drops, etc. Of course lighting is very important for a game to look good, so if you prefer a game that looks good, leave this as medium. Otherwise, pushing it down to low will cause you to lose a bit of graphics quality, but you'll gain quite a few FPS. For me, I'll leave this as medium. The water setting down here, of course, is the quality of the water. Unlike other games, this isn't a heavy setting as it doesn't customize how see-through the water is, etc. It only really works on the surface of the water, meaning that it doesn't take anywhere as much graphics compute power as you may expect. So leaving this at medium or high are usually okay if you won't really lose too many FPS for a high setting here. The terrain option is next, and this only really controls tessellation and parallax mapping. As you can see, it's not changing a huge amount, so leaving this as high or medium is probably fine. Changing this lower will only really change the game slightly, and not really net you any extra FPS. This doesn't really affect too much, so leaving this at medium or low is probably fine. The volumetric fog option over here, is very noticeable in game when you have it set to low or medium. 
Leaving this set to high or above really makes the game look quite a bit better, but of course will come with some FPS cost. If you're seeing a lot of volumetric fog, god rays and the rest, having this set to a higher option like medium or high is really what you want, if not ultra. Though this really comes down to you and your preference, and this could affect you in quite a few ways with FPS, or in fact not at all, depending on what graphics card you have and the other settings here. For me, I'll be leaving this as high as everything below that just looks a little bit too crusty. The HD textures option is next, and unfortunately I'm not able to turn this on as I haven't downloaded the 30GB or so HD texture pack. Of course, having it on will cause you to use more VRAM and of course, lose more FPS. The anti-aliasing setting is next, and the lower that you have this setting, the more blocky edges will be, although in this game it doesn't really cause too many issues. As you can see, the only thing that is noticeable here is that TAA isn't supported for multi-GPU. If Fidelity Super Resolution 1.0 is turned on, anti-aliasing mode is forced to be TAA. The motion blur setting down here is something I turn off in basically every game. It'll definitely lower your visibility and possibly cost FPS. Camera shakes, of course, also completely down to user preference, whether you'd like your UI to shake and camera to shake or not. The poisoned and drunk effects also are only really user preference. For some of my friends, I know that having any one of these on will cause them to feel quite sick while playing the game. So they'll usually have off, minimal and off, but for me, I don't mind these too much and they won't cost me too many FPS other than the motion blur setting up here, which I absolutely despise. Unfortunately, DXR reflections and shadows I'm not able to show you here as I don't have a super new graphics card. I'll head across to the color tab at the very top and you'll see there's not too much here other than anything for user preference. The advanced settings tab up here is the last place that you'll find some options that may affect how you play your game. The VSync option should always be set to off unless you're receiving screen tearing, in which case you can turn it on to stabilize your FPS, but of course you'll get more input latency when you do have this on. If you'd like to limit the FPS, rather use the frame rate lock over here and lower the number to lower the number of frames being pushed out on your graphics card. You'll only really want to do this if you want to record in OBS and things like that in better qualities while your game is trying to eat your entire graphics card. The field view scaling over here is also up to user preference, whatever you'd like, but as you can see, it's recommended to lower the value if you're playing on a multi-monitor setup to avoid stretching. Increasing the value may help with motion sickness. Of course, pushing field of view higher in most games, and more than likely this game as well, will cause you to lose some FPS as you're rendering in more objects on the screen at once. The adaptive resolution option down here is something you should usually leave off, and the option is disabled on multi-GPU setups. The game will automatically lower the resolution on your screen to allow you to gain more FPS to reach a 30 or 60 FPS minimum, or at least target. If you have this on, you won't be able to use the resolution scale down here. If you're absolutely pushed for FPS and you need to pull anything more out of the game, you have everything set to low, this is the option that you should change, resolution scale, before you change the resolution over here on the monitor tab, as lowering the resolution scale here will give you better looking gameplay overall, instead of just making everything more blurry by adjusting display resolution to something your display doesn't necessarily support or isn't native. And finally, the last option, Fidelity FX Super Resolution, is something you can turn on on any graphics card to get some more FPS. This is a performance boost, and with it turned on, you will get more FPS. Images are rendered in a lower resolution and then upscaled with techniques to provide very close results to the original resolution. When turned on, adaptive resolution is turned off, Resolution scale is set to a default value, and anti-aliasing is set to TAA. So before I turn this on, I'll close out of the menu and show you what kind of FPS I'm getting now. I've gone from an average of 45-ish to about 55-ish, which is a lot more playable, at least closer to the 60 FPS target. Of course, you can push the settings as low as you'd like, but this is probably good enough for me. Let's go ahead and turn on that setting in video, advanced, Fidelity Super Resolution. You can use this on any graphics card, it doesn't have to be a new one. The more to the right that you push the FSR mode down here, the less good your game will look, but the more FPS you should have. So, with it on and set to ultra quality, as you can see, I'm getting around 60 FPS and the game looks pretty much the same. I gained about 5 FPS. If we head back to options, video advanced, change this to say quality, 
Now I'm getting about 67, 65 ish options, video, advanced. Let's push this all the way to performance and see what kind of FPS we get. Now the game is noticeably blurrier, and of course I wouldn't really recommend playing on this, but I'm getting about 75 FPS. Anything above, say, quality, you should rather go ahead and lower the other options instead of playing around with the setting down here, as it'll just lower the graphics quality of your game. I'll leave it as probably ultra quality for now. Of course, if I want to squeeze more FPS, I'll go ahead and drop the settings here a bit lower. And as you can see, the anti-aliasing setting over here has now been disabled as we've turned on FSR over here. If you try and enable the Fidelity CAS at the bottom here, it can help with the quality when you have it set to, say, performance, but it'll only really be slight. The game will still look pretty garbage, and now it just looks like it's been sharpened quite a bit. This is for really bad computers, not something you should have set up if you're going for any kind of quality, but of course it does squeeze out some extra FPS when you need it. So I'll probably leave mine there. That's how I'll play the game. But of course, lower the settings, play with them as you feel, and heck, even raise them if you'd like to get better quality for whatever scene that you're currently playing. As for the other settings, there's not really too much you need to change, other than maybe in the gameplay tab, you can disable reticle sway and things similar to that. The presets tab over here is really for those who have certain impairments, vision, hearing, motor, cognitive, and colors, and you may need to use this depending on what you're currently suffering from. It's absolutely awesome that a game has so many options that can help people who really need things like this. And it really does give quite a bit of fine control over the game. Of course, quite a few of these settings are pulled from other locations in the options menu, but it's nice to have them all stuck together in one place. But anyways, this is what I'll be playing my game at, a nice smooth 60 FPS while recording, and I'm happy with that. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Techno Bay of a Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.